Hey everyone, Coach Brad here, and I hope your training and preparation for Ironman Lake Placid has been going well, and you're feeling calm and confident and, and race ready as you enter the, the final, uh, put the final touches on your, on your race preparation over the next uh, week and a half or so. Ironman Lake Placid is always one of my favorite races when I was competing professionally. Uh, just the beauty of the Adir Adirondacks, the, the town of Lake Placid, and certainly the, the history of the Olympics being held there twice. And, and of course, the miracle on ice in 1980. Just, uh, I just think it's such a cool venue. And it's, it's always been one of my favorites. And I raced there five times with some modest success, having three top 10 finishes, uh, two sixth place finishes, and one eighth place finishes. And it was a, a race that was always kind of close to my heart. It was where I earned two of my four Kona qualifying spots when I was competing professionally. And I just always viewed it as uh, such a cool venue. And one thing I really liked about it is that it was just a fair, tough, honest course. I mean, there are no easy Ironman races out there. I'm sure you, are, you, you recognize that. And Ironman Lake Placid certainly has its own nuances and, and, and treats uh, to offer you on, on race day. Uh, I want to encourage you, in addition to watching this video, to familiarize yourselves with the athlete guide and the course maps and some videos that are available on the uh, race website itself. Uh, the more info you have, I mean, you don't want to overload it, but the more info you have just from a familiarization standpoint, just the more calm and prepared I think uh, your mind will be. So let's just, uh, let's jump right into this and I'm going to start sharing my screen with you and we'll go over uh, each of the course maps that are again available to you on the race uh, website. So we'll start with the swim and pull that up here. And the swim at Ironman Lake Placid is really what I believe to be one of the most athlete friendly swims on, uh, of all their races. Um, just the calm, clear, clean waters of Mirror Lake uh, just sets, sets you up to begin your day in a really good position spot. You're not gonna have to be fighting any major currents or chop in the water. Um, and one thing that's unique uh, to this course is that uh, they do a lot of rowing uh, in Mirror Lake. And so there's a permanent cable line that's about maybe two or three feet, I don't know, maybe four feet below the surface of the water that you can use for sighting to help guide you along the way. Uh, there'll be plenty of sighting buoys uh, in this clockwise, two loop clockwise swim. But in addition to the sighting buoys, you can use this cable line that's below the surface of the water just uh, to make sure you're, you're, you're holding clean, uh, good lines throughout, throughout the swim. Um, they encourage you to keep the buoys to your left, but technically, if you want to swim to the inside, if there's a little cleaner water, you, won't, you can swim onto the, to the uh, inside of these buoys. The ones that you have to absolutely keep on your right hand, right hand side or your right shoulder are the, the turn buoys at each end. Those you, you have to go to the outside of. The swim will be a rolling start. So you wanna make sure you position yourself in the, uh, the time that uh, you anticipate to, to complete the swim in. And just start with a nice, easy, uh, fluid manner. You don't want to uh, kick too fast or have too high of a stroke rate at the outset that could jack up and elevate your breathing and kind of you know, allow you to, to hyperventilate or have that breathing uh, get away from you. So really just try to keep things calm and fluid and smooth over the first uh, couple hundred meters or so, and then just get into your nice comfortable rhythm with your, the, the sighting and, and the, the breathing pattern that uh, you've been practicing in the days and, and weeks and months leading up uh, to this race. The one thing that is a little bit unique about Ironman Lake Placid being a two loop swim course is that you're gonna be exiting the water at the end of the first lap before you begin your second lap. So going from that horizontal position to exiting the water and being vertical with a very short, easy jog, and then going back into the water where you'll be going horizontal again, can be very different on the body. So one thing I would encourage you to practice uh, the day before the race or a couple of days before the race when you're on site and have access to the swim venue is to uh, practice that, that particular aspect, the, the swim exit, standing up, easy jog along the beach, and then you know, going back into the water, uh, just so your body's familiar with that. In addition, doing a pre-race swim will give you an idea of the water temperature, the clarity, and any landmarks, uh, any trees or buildings or structures that can be used for sighting uh, 
to help you out, uh, guide you to the, you know, the most efficient swim and, and most pleasant swim you can have on race day. It really is uh, a beautiful swim in Mirror Lake there. After you exit the water, uh, you're gonna have about a half a mile jog to the Olympic Oval where Transition is making its return after a hiatus from last year where they had some construction going on. Um, so one thing I would recommend is that after you exit the water and uh, get away from uh, the water's edge a little bit is step off to the side and remove your wetsuit. Uh, and then it'll allow you to run a little bit easier with the wetsuit uh, free from your body and instead of trying to run and jog and walk and struggle over a half a mile and working it down to your hips, I would take it off close to water's edge and then carry it in your hands and just make a nice easy jog up to uh, transition area. There will be plenty of volunteers to help you uh, get through transition. So you just wanna be swift and efficient and um, you, know, you don't wanna rush. You wanna make sure you have everything you need as far as uh, uh, your nutrition and hydration and anything special you're gonna be carrying with you on the bike. One thing I would also encourage you to do when you drop your bike and gear bags off on Saturday, the day before the race, is walk through the flow of transition. Just so you have an idea in your mind and you know kind of the direction you'll be going uh, after you exit the water, which way you're gonna be going to grab your, your bike gear bag and then make your way into the change tent. And then just the opposite, when you finish the bike, which way will you be going back into the chain, grabbing your run gear bag and then going into the change tent and then exiting out, on, out onto the run course. So just again, having that familiarization just kind of preps the mind and will set you up for uh, a, smoother, a smoother race. Um, one of the, I'm going to give you a mantra for each segment of the race. Uh, I think, you know, you want to pick something that resonates with you, but for a suggestion I have for the swim is that it's just fluid flow, nice calm waters, just fluid flow to help you get through that swim. Let's transition over to the bike course. And, and when people talk about Ironman Lake Placid, oftentimes it's this iconic bike course that comes to the forefront of our minds. And it is a beautiful course, super scenic. Uh, it's just Beautiful, beautiful course. It is challenging, obviously, with the amount of elevation gain. Uh, Ironman course map, it's interesting. If I scroll down here, um, yep, yeah, there we go. Has a gain per loop at uh, just over 41, almost 4,200 feet. That seems elevated to me. A lot of the course uh, maps, similar, just the exact same map that, that they're displaying above here is uh, closer to 30, 300 or 3,100 feet per, per loop. So um, I think the, I guess in your mind, be prepared for 82, uh, 100 feet of climbing, but I think it's uh, closer to 66, 6,700 feet of climbing. At any rate, let's um, jump back up to the, uh, the race course here, or the bike course, and we'll just go over to the various, go over the various segments. That's one thing I would really encourage you to do is you're not thinking about 56 miles or 112 miles, but you're breaking the, the each course, each segment of the, each part of the race into segments. And that's definitely true for the bike course. Um, the first segment of this bike course is exiting T1 and uh, making your way out of town into the first out and back at, over by the ski jump area, bobsled lane, and then making that right or left-hand turn onto highway 73, which will uh, get you on your way down to Keene uh, at this point. But the first, uh, a lot of people don't ever think about the hills and, and small amount of climbing that's in the, within the first 10 miles of this course. I caution you, this is a course that de absolutely demands patience. So just uh, be patient, be smart, be prudent with your, your effort in the opening miles. Everyone's going to be feeling amped up and be feeling good. Uh, but just be smart here in the first 10 miles and, and just settle in onto the bike, just dial in your cadence, your, your hydration uh, and fueling plan, and, and just start the day off feeling very, very comfortable and relaxed. No one's going to win the race in the first 10 miles, but a lot of people could overcook themselves uh, in the first 10 miles, which is really going to come back to bite you in the later stages of the first loop and certainly on the second loop. So just be cautious and, and be patient over the, the first uh, eight to 10 miles or so. Once you hit the, around the 10 mile mark is when you're gonna have your long descent down into the, the town of Keene here. And it's a very fast descent. Stay within your comfort zone. 
if you're comfortable in the arrow position, absolutely stay down in the arrow bars. Um, but if you're just not comfortable with descending, it's okay to sit up. You just wanna stay upright and, and just uh, be safe as you navigate uh, some of the steeper, se steeper sections of this descent. There'll be good crowd support as you make your way into Keene. And uh, so just have some caution. There'll be plenty of volunteers out there cautioning you on these turns here as you make your way through the small town of Keene. And then the next uh, segment is really kind of where the flattest part of the course is from uh, this point here of Keene uh, up to the, the town of, of Jay. It's approximately 10, uh, 11 miles or so. This would be a great opportunity to check in with your posture, stand up periodically, stretch out your lower back, stay on top of your cadence, just nice and fluid. At the, the effort you've been practicing, make sure you're taking care of yourself with the, the fluid and the hydration and just try to stay nice and relaxed. And, and again, don't get overly aggressive on these faster, flatter segments. You may have some crosswinds uh, depending on the day or some headwinds through this segment, um, but just try to stay relaxed. Uh, Mother nature always wins. So don't fight any crosswinds or, or headwinds along the way. When you make this left-hand turn to Jay and make your way up towards the out and back section near the town of Wilmington on Hazleton Road, this is about a five mile segment that can be pretty sneaky. There are some pretty uh, steep and punchy uh, rollers and, and hills, short, small hills on, on this segment. So again, just be, be, be careful, don't overdo it, spin it to win it, you know, stay in a nice, nice comfortable, easy gear and it's okay to get out of the saddle to help get you up and over some of the steeper climbs. Uh, and after you crest those climbs, don't just stop pedaling, use the grat, use the momentum, stay on top of your cadence, keep pedaling to help propel you down over to the to other side. A lot of people will make the mistake of once they, they get to the top of some of these rollers or, or short, short climbs, and just stop pedaling and glide and coast. You want to stay on top of your cadence, build some momentum to help uh, carry you into a descent on the back side of those. The uh, out and back section along Hazleton Road, uh, this is a very scenic section. You're going to get some, uh, it's real sunny out or temperatures are warm. You're going to get some nice coverage and some trees along this section. Um, just nice flat to rolling terrain through here. It's a fairly fast segment of the course. So uh, again, a good, good opportunity to check in with your posture. You know, you're around uh, 30 miles or so into the bike at this point on the first loop. So just check in with your posture, cadence, keep it nice and relaxed, making sure you're staying on top of your, your fueling and hydration. After you complete this uh, out and back section, you'll be making your way to the town of Wilmington and uh, then begins the extended climb, which everyone talks about, uh, all the way back to, to Lake Placid. And this is where the, the bulk of the elevation gain is gonna come from. There's nothing crazy steep until you get to the end back towards town. So a lot of the climbing, you can stay in your arrow bars along this segment of the course and uh, past White, White Face Mountain. And as you approach towards the end of uh, this segment towards town, you get to what's known as uh, the three bears, mama bear or baby bear, mama bear and papa bear which does have a little bit of bite to it. Um, but again, get out of the saddle and a nice, easy, comfortable gear and, and get yourself up and over uh, those climbs. Do not, again, do not coast once you reach the crest of some of these hills at the end. Stay on top of your cadence, keep pedaling and get some momentum that will carry you down into, uh, into the descent. Um, you'll make your way towards the end of the loop. You've got a short out and back section and this is, uh, Right in the area, we're going to be able to grab onto your personal needs uh, bag that will be set up there, which you will drop off on race morning for both, both the bike and the run. This is a good opportunity to, to grab a, a special treat for yourself, something that could be different than uh, typical race-like food. I always like to store a pack of Fig Newtons um, or something like that that was going to just be different to mix it up. Um, if it's a really hot day or, or, or modest temperatures, I would even consider stashing uh, a frozen bottle here uh, with your favorite electrolyte drink. There's nothing like a cold uh, bottle that uh, will feel really good uh, to, your, to your taste and to, and to your body uh, on race day when you're halfway through the bike. 
So you just make your way back uh, through town here, past transition area, as you begin uh, the second loop. And again, applying the same principles as you did on the first loop over the first 10 miles or so, as you make your way to that longer descent, sustained sustain descent towards Keene. Just use caution, be patient, and maintain a present focus throughout uh, the race. Uh, never allow your mind to get too far ahead of yourself. And certainly that holds true with the bike. Uh, when you're on this bike course, take in the scenery, just enjoy being out there. It's such a beautiful course, but keep the mind present. Focus on your cadence, focus on your effort, and uh, focus on your fueling and hydration. Just take care of yourself when you're, when you're out on that course. Um, you're going to be prepared for this. There's nothing you uh, are going to see that uh, you won't be ready for and all the training and preparation you've done. So just uh, have confidence in, in your fitness and, and just be safe and take care of yourself out on the course there. One thing that, that I think has happened each of the five years I've raced Lake Placid is that at some point during the bike, it seemed to rain. Uh, and because you're in the Adirondack Mountains, it may be sunny and clear in, in the town of Lake Placid, but it could be, uh, you know, some, some slight rain uh, down in Wilmington area at the start of the long extended climb back to Lake Placid. So just mentally be prepared uh, that you may experience some rain at some point uh, on the bike. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, iconic run course. And again, it's one of the, uh, the more challenging run courses out there. Uh, again, there are no easy Ironman races. There are more, no easy Ironman run courses. And Lake Placid is one of the more uh, opportunistic uh, run courses out there. Oh, the mantra that I would give you for the bike uh, that, that coincides with being patient throughout the day is steady Eddie. Just keep that effort steady Eddie while you're on the bike. And uh, oftentimes people will say bike for show, run for dough. And bike splits may get the social media attention and a lot of the buzz, but it's the run splits that really can define your race. Um, so as you uh, finish the bike and exit transition and you're running out of town, you're going to get a lot of buzz around town with crowds of tremendous crowd support uh, throughout uh, throughout the throughout town and, and some down some nice downhill terrain as you make your way and, and run out of town. Uh, but just stay relaxed. Let gravity do its thing. Just let the legs kind of turn over naturally. Don't force the effort shake out your arms a little bit just to keep your shoulders and your upper body relaxed and again, just be patient and embrace the, the crowd support that'll be uh, keeping you going and cheering you on as you exit town, but just be patient as you uh, make your way uh, out of town in the early miles of this run course. And it's a uh, nice rolling terrain and, and with some downhills as you make your way over to the most challenging part of the course, I think, is this section along River Road, the out and back section, from about mile two and a half on the first loop to the turnaround at just past six miles. This section of the course can get quiet. And this is where mentally you've got to stay strong. You've got to stay focused. You've got to use the aid stations, keep your core temperature cool if it's a really hot day by putting ice down your race kit and over your head if you're wearing a cap or visor. Use the aid stations that are that are available to you. It's kind of a winding road, so I would encourage you to run the tangents uh, along this section, the out and back section on on River Road. And um, you know you don't have to stay to the far right or the far left on the shoulder. Shorten the course up as much as you can by running those tangents. But just you know keep a very calm and confident mindset uh, and a focused mindset as you navigate on both loops of this out and back section along River Road because it uh, tends to be the spot where you'll start seeing people doing a lot of walking and uh, try to uh, not get sucked into that, especially between aid stations. It's absolutely okay to walk uh, at any point during the race and especially through aid stations to make sure you get what your body needs. But when you're walking through those aid stations, walk with purpose. Don't get sucked into that Ironman shuffle um, just kind of a slow meandering walk. Stay confident, stay upright, check in with your posture periodically, keep things super relaxed from your facial muscles, through your shoulders, through your torso, through your hips, etc. So just periodically do a complete body scan from head to toe to make sure that, uh, that you're keeping things relaxed. So 
it's very flat mostly flat through this out and back section of, of River Road. And then you're gonna start making your way back to town. And this is where it can start getting a little bit hillier as you make your way back to town and into town here along Main Street. And then you make uh, the, the left-hand uh, turn here. This is where it gets real steep. So this little section right here uh, through this left-hand turn and approaching town, the outskirts of town, uh, absolutely okay to do a power walk. Uh, sometimes that's going to be a lot faster than trying to, to jog up it. So absolutely okay to do a little power walk on this, uh, the steeper segment uh, of this run course on both laps. As you finish lap one, you're going to run back by transition in the Olympic Oval, and you're going to run along the uh, Mirror Road. This is a beautiful segment of road. You're going to get some shade. So take advantage of it. Your personal needs bag will be along this point. So again, anything you may need uh, for the to, to help keep you you going and motivated uh, will be available to you here. You've got this turnaround and then you're making your way back past transition and to begin the second loop. Um, but you're gonna get lots of good uh, crowd support through this entire segment of the race along Mirror uh, Lake Road and, and back through town and back towards uh, the outskirts of town and the horse uh, horse show fairgrounds, and then making your way eventually back to the, uh, the the longer out and back stretch on River Road, which again I think mentally can be the the most demanding uh, part of the race. Um, so just maintain a present focus, periodically check in with your posture, keep things loose and relaxed, and shake out those arms and and smile along the way. Thank the volunteers. And the, uh, the mantra for the run is having gritty greatness. Uh, just be strong, be confident, and it's just about relentless forward motion as you uh, tick off those miles on the run course. Once you uh, get back in towards town again, you're gonna have that final out and back segment all on Mirror Lake Road, and then you make your way to transition in the finish line. And this is uh, the finish line uh, venue at Lake Placid is one of the the best out there. It's just boisterous. It's iconic. It's going to be on the Olympic Oval. Um, so really enjoy it. Smile, take it in, soak it up. And uh, it's just a spectacular finish area. So I want you to, 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 to just soak it all in, in the atmosphere there after uh, a, a, hard, a hard race and a job well done on your part. Um, just some general closing thoughts as you put the final finishing touches on your Ironman Lake Placid race prep, trust your fitness and preparation, stick to your routines, eat the foods and, and, and that your body knows uh, on the final days leading up to, to race day, make sleep a priority, uh, just try to keep stress levels as low as possible. Uh, and then remember, I, I saw this somewhere that another coach had written, I don't, I don't remember uh, where or when, but it's your race, your pace and your plan. So wishing you all the best for a very safe, successful, and uh, strong day of racing there at Lake Placid. I'm going to stop sharing. And of course, if you have any questions uh, about your final race preparation, you can reach out to me personally, uh, brad at d3multisport.com. Uh, put a question in our Facebook, our, our team Facebook. There's a lot of experienced athletes and, and great community to answer any other questions you may have, but don't hesitate to reach out to me as well and, and wishing you all the best leading up to race day and, and uh, hope you have a great day out there.